Alright, so you want to know about the parts of a carburetor. This is a carburetor that came spare with the Yamaha slider over there. And I've not had it apart before or even really looked at it. We'll go over what they are and what they do. So this piece right here sits on top of the carburetor. And this is what your throttle cable runs into. So your cable will run through this end from the throttle lever. And then it will come down through here, through this spring. And then into this piece. Extra piece. Okay, so this is assembled like this. So into here, like so. This piece is sitting into what's called your needle. Now, and I'm going to just come around to the camera there so I can make sure I get this part because this is important. I want you to see this right here. So this is the needle that your throttle cable attaches to. And if you see here, there's a little clip and a bunch of grooves right at the top. So your needle's sat here inside the carburetor, and you can see as I move this up, the needle slides up. The needle is sliding down into a tube which is directly connected to your main jet. If you put the clip at the very bottom, it causes the needle to be sat higher up inside this brass tube, which is connected to your main jet. Now if you look at this needle, you should be able to tell that it's tapered. So it narrows itself inwards as it comes down to the bottom. So if this clip was set at the very bottom, your needle would be higher up and you'd be getting more fuel between quarter throttle to three quarters throttle. If the clip is set higher, you're getting less fuel because the needle is further down inside this chamber. And that's again between quarter throttle to three quarters throttle. This is your vacuum line. So there's a pipe sat on here, which runs to your pet cock. As fuel and air is passing through and the piston is rising up and down inside the cylinder, it's causing a vacuum sucking the fuel and air through the carb, but also causes a vacuum right here. You can probably just see that in there where it runs through. This pipe that's connected to this is sucking from the petcock and it opens a valve inside the petcock which allows fuel to flow out of the fuel tank through the petcock and in through this one, which then goes down into your float chamber. So oil runs in through this side of the carburetor mixes with the fuel, heads into the cylinder and the crankcase and lubricates everything before it ignites. So we'll move on to the inside of the carrot. I can already hear something rattling around inside there. So let's take off the float bulb. And uh, we'll see what's rattling around in there because that's not normal. Like I say, I've not had this apart before so we're going to find out together. This is why I'm struggling so much to figure out what the problem is with this bike because there's a lot of spare parts that came with it which means that the previous owner has also been struggling to find out what was wrong with it. Ah, so what we could hear rattling around, if you can see it just there, is a jet, the pilot jet, also known as the idle jet. That's not supposed to just be rattling around in there. As you can see right here is where it's supposed to go. So we'll keep that out for now. So this is your main jet, which controls three quarter throttle fueling to full throttle. So between three quarters and full throttle, that's what this jet is controlling. This is your main jet. And this one is a 90 from the looks of it. So we can just go ahead and take that out and show you what it looks like. If you don't already know, that's what it looks like. So that's your main jet. Your pilot jet or your idle jet is the one that should have been sat in here. And this controls how much fuel you get in when you're not doing anything. The bike's just idling up to a quarter throttle open. That's what this controls. So it goes pilot jet or idle jet for no throttle to quarter throttle. Your needle controls the fueling from quarter throttle to three quarters throttle. And your main jet controls that final three quarters to full wide open throttle. And again, this is all to do with fueling, how much fuel is going into the engine. That's what these control. Uh, this is your float, which sits inside the float bowl. So when you start the bike up and you get in a vacuum, as I said earlier, a vacuum is caused on this side. It sucks fuel, it allows the pet cock to open up and sucks fuel into the carburetor, which comes down into this float bowl. And when the float bowl fills up, this float stops the float from overfilling. That's what this controls. I mean, I'm not sure what this is, it's just falling out. That looks snapped to me. I think that's part, that is part of, so, the float is pivoting on this pin right here and this piece has just fallen out and if you can see that this piece has just fallen out is a part of this pin it's snapped for some reason 
so that's not ideal either. We'll try and try and get that out of there as we can using this little needle. So there's the pin that the float ball swings on. So I'll take that out of there. It's snapped, it's not supposed to snap. Again, this is an old calf, an old beaten up calf right that we're not going to be using. Now this is your float and this is your needle right here. This little needle that you've got, how this works, it sits in line with where the fuel comes into the carburetor. This is potentially a plug, is the best way to think of it. So, this little needle right here will sit inside there like that, and this pivots on the pin, right? So as the fuel comes in through this little brass fitting, which is kind of hanging out and knackered, that's not supposed to do that either. Fuel comes in through here, and it comes in where that little needle is right there, that thing there that's coming out now. And as the float chamber fills up with fuel, the float is then pushed up with the fuel level, and as it pushes up, this pin then stops any more fuel coming through into the carburetor so that it doesn't flood the carb. And that is pretty much everything. The only other thing you've got here on the, on the bottom of the carb is this right here. This is your choke. So that again, that just, when the bike's cold, it just controls how much more fuel is coming in. You open your choke, it gives it more fuel, less air, and helps the bike keep running when it's cold. I've not really needed the choke on this bike right here, because this bike's great. It's been fantastic for me so far, but that's pretty much everything. Oh, there's a tube right here, there it is. This little tube again. I showed you this earlier, this is just what the throttle cable sits inside of. So. I'll recap everything real quick for the end of the video in case you weren't sure. That's how simple a carburetor is. It is really simple. It's not a hard thing to grasp concept of. The harder part is just tuning the carb and again that's not too difficult to pick which jets you need and then adjust your air and fuel screw. That's another good thing that we can talk about actually whilst I've got you here. So this is the outlet side of the carburetor where the fuel and air and oil passes through into the cylinder. This is your intake side where your air filter would go. So on carburetors you always have a screw like this right here that you can adjust and if you tighten this screw up you're giving the carb and the bike less air if you tighten it up if you turn this screw anti-clockwise you'll be giving the bike more air now the thing to understand with carburetors and these screws in particular is the positioning of the screw if it's on this side of the carburetor where the air is going in it's an air mixture screw. If it's on this side, where it's coming out, it's known as a fuel mixture screw. They do the same thing, more or less, but one's controlling fuel, one's controlling air. You'll not normally only have one of these on your bike. You won't have to worry about fuel and air screws. You've just got one air screw to adjust. And this right here is a screw that runs through inside the car. I don't know if you can see that, but it is just what controls the idle. It's the idle screw. So let's go ahead and pull that out. And I'll give you a little explanation on that as well. The further in you wind this screw, you're not supposed to have it anywhere near this when you're running the bike, but the further in you wind this screw, the further it pushes this up, and as it's pushing this up, it's basically lifting up the needle and all this together and controls the idle by letting in more fuel and more air at the same time. As you wind that screw out, this drops further in, giving the bike less fuel, less air. And that is pretty much everything you need to know about a carburetor. Oh, as well, there's a little spring in there. There's a little spring in there, which is where the idle control screw goes. There'll also be a little spring as well, where your air screw is behind there as well. But yeah, it's pretty simple stuff. It's not too hard to get your head around. The best way to learn is by doing. So if you want to learn more, pick up a spare carburetor or just take the one off your bike you've got and start working on it. If there's no problems with the bike, don't bother. Leave it on there. Only take your carburetor off if you're changing the jet in or if the bike's not running right and you think maybe you need to clean your carburetor because something is stuck in one of these jets, which happened to the Typhoon just last week. And that was a pain, but now we've cleaned all the carburetor out so that thing's running mint. Although I do have a slight leak. If you look here on the float chamber, there's a gasket running around which stops the fuel leaking out from the bottom. And my gasket, I think has seen better days. It looks fine but it's not sealing the carburetor properly anymore. So I think I'm gonna to need to get a new gasket or maybe just replace my whole carburetor because I have plans for the future. I won't discuss them right now. You'll see that in a later video. 
but yeah, we might not be keeping the carburetor that's on the bike for much longer. There's not really much point in putting this back together, honestly this is broken, but for the sake of the video I'm showing you guys how it goes back together, I will do. Stick that in there, we'll slide this broken pin back through here, so that just pivots on the pin. And I think that is all the internal pieces, yep, so we can just stick this back on here, put these little screws back in, and then put this back away in a box where it will never be seen again because I don't want to look at it and nobody else needs to. But yeah guys, it's as simple as that, that's it. Could have done a live TikTok for this, maybe next time with a spare phone. That's it guys, if you've got any more videos you want to know if there's anything you want to know about bikes that you don't know about on these three-stroke scooters just ask and if i know about it if i have the information i'll try and tell you more about it or we can do more educational videos like this stripping down things and showing you how it all works all right thanks for watching guys and as always guys if you enjoy the content please drop a follow and share with your friends and get them to follow too because i'm trying to grow the account